Welcome to 21st Century Health. I'm Jackie Bales. It's been 60 years since organ transplants became common, but we're still struggling to keep patients' immune systems from attacking those transplanted organs. Generally, transplant patients have to be on immunosuppressive drugs for the rest of their lives. As we're about to hear, though, new medicines are improving the longevity and quality of life for organ recipients. We're joined by Dr. Robert Foster, CEO of Isotechnica Pharma. Welcome, Robert. Thank you. Robert, what are the unmet needs in drug therapy for preventing organ transplant rejection? Well, Jackie, there's really two big areas that we have to deal with in organ transplantation. One is the rejection, of course, because when you put in a, an organ into a patient, it's kind of an unnatural situation, so the body wants to reject. Mm -hmm. So we have to give drugs to avoid the, those rejection episodes, whether it's chronic or acute rejection episodes. And the second one is the safety of the patient because the drugs that we use are quite uh, potent, so we really have to manage the, the drugs very, very carefully so that we don't create another problem apart from the, uh, the transplantation itself. Hmm. So tell us about your company, Isotechnica, and its mission. Well, our company is all about trying to answer the difficulty of using these types of drugs in organ transplant recipients. So, and again, the, the problem we always encounter are safety issues. So, after 25 plus years of working in this area, we're not so much concerned about the, the efficacy side of this thing now, uh, how these drugs work. What we're really concerned about is safety issues. And the biggest safety issue probably facing the market leader right now is that the market leader actually causes diabetes in a large number of patients. So after transplantation, if you take a drug to avoid rejection, yet you're also taking a drug that will ultimately provoke or induce diabetes, that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. And that's what really we're trying to do is answer that problem. So Isotechnica then has single-mindedly focused on drugs to prevent kidney transplant rejection? Yes. I mean, kidney transplantation is really the number one organ that's being transplanted in patients. Probably it's about 70% or so of all solid organs that are transplanted are kidneys. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you have liver and heart and mm -hmm. lung intestines, other things, too. This is fascinating. Let's go into the lab to learn more about voclosporin in this 21st Century Health Field Report. Organ transplants can be successful with proper medical management, helping to prevent transplant rejection, which can possibly lead to transplant failure and the necessity to remove the organ from the recipient without delay. Isotechnica Pharma Incorporated is a biopharmaceutical company focused on the discovery and advancement of unique immunosuppressive therapeutics. Focalisporin is a drug that suppresses the immune system. And what I mean by that is that when you put a new kidney into a patient, a kidney transplant patient, the first thing the body wants to do is reject that organ, get rid of it because it doesn't belong there. So Voclosporin is a new drug that suppresses the immune system in a way that we don't lose that organ in a patient that's been transplanted. We've made Voclosporin using good old fashioned chemistry. So we've gone to our chemistry labs and we've actually synthesized Voclosporin from the ground up. Isotechnica's lead drug, Voclosporin, is an immunosuppressant designed to efficiently prevent organ transplant rejection with minimal negative impact on the patient's body. Voclosporin also provides significant safety advantages over treatments that are currently available. Well, it's interesting. In the last 30 years or so, we, we have had drugs out there for treating patients that need a transplant and avoiding rejection. These drugs that have been used have toxicity or safety concerns. And Voclosporin was designed chemically so that we can uh, get around some of these safety concerns, such as new onset diabetes, post-transplantation, and some of the difficulties of dosing these drugs in, a in actual patients and getting in the right therapeutic range. So uh, we've been able to get around some of the safety concerns while maintaining efficacy. Isotechnica stresses their focus on developing new medicines to improve the quality of life and longevity of organ transplant patients around the world. With Voclosporin, now entering the final phase of clinical testing for the prevention of kidney transplant rejection, they are well on their way to an unmatched solution. For 21st Century Health, I'm Steve Michaels reporting. Dr. Foster, where and how was Voclosporin invented or discovered? Well, our laboratories, our research laboratories, are located in Edmonton, in Canada, 
And that's where the drug was discovered. So in our own research labs back in about 1995, or actually near early 1996, is when we created voclosporin in a mm -hmm. test tube. What is unique about voclosporin, and why should transplant doctors and their patients be interested in this new medicine? Well, Jackie, there's two older drugs that have been on the market for a long time. The first one came out in 1982. The second one came out about 1994, 1995. And what we know about these two drugs is that there's a margin of safety that exists between uh, where you start to see efficacy. In other words, patients don't reject their organ mm -hmm. or have a less incidence of rejecting their organ. And then on the other side of the fence, really, you have s safety issues that start kicking in. Mm -hmm. So in between those two points is what we call a therapeutic window. Mm -hmm. And for the other two drugs, um, there's a very narrow therapeutic window, which really means, if you think about it, in terms of a highway, for example, you're driving down a single or a double lane. And what we've done with Vakasporin, we've made about five or six or however many lanes. Hmm. So in other words, we have a really wide therapeutic window. In other words, we know we can have efficacy that's at least as good as the market leading drug, but at the same time, we push the safety issues away far enough that we're, we're really comfortable how this drug drives in the clinical setting. Where are you now in the drug development process and when could we potentially see voclosporin on the market? Well, we've been working on the drug a long time now. About 2,000 patients have taken this drug and we have a lot of patients that have been taking it for kidney transplantation. So we know the drug works very well. It does have this, or at least it exhibits this wide therapeutic window that is really critical when it comes to managing transplant patients. And we're getting ready to kick off phase three clinical trials. So what that means really is that over a span of about 36 months, we'll be testing this drug from start to finish over 36 months and then leading into market approval in the U.S. hopefully in Europe as well. Hmm. And where are you conducting these phase three clinical trials and how can potential patients find out about them? We're uh, conducting the trials right now or soon to be uh, in the U.S. predominantly. There is going to be some cl uh, clinical trial sites in Canada as well. After all, we are Canadian, <laughs> okay. and um, we have also a lot of clinical trial sites that are being prepped for us in Germany and Poland, the UK, so there's going to be a, a large European presence as well. So predominantly 600 patients in North America in one half of the trial, you can call it. The other half will be 600 patients in predominantly the EU. Mm -hmm. And how would the patients find out or be part of this trial? Well, the way these typically work is in, in the transplant community is very, very small. I would think. So, yeah, you don't just advertise for people. Exactly. To come. So what happens is that if you're on dialysis and then you find that you're you're, uh, you're able to get your kidney that you've been waiting perhaps for years for, uh, your physician will tell you, okay, we're going to put a new kidney in you, we're going to transplant you, and you can enroll in this new clinical trial using Vakosporin that our company has. And so it's really up to the physician to try and uh, promote this use of the drug in a patient. And why would the patient even consider something like this after, of course, being a transplantation or waiting for a new kidney for years? It's because this drug, again, it has really good efficacy. It has, a, I think, a, a lot better safety profile than the market leader. And it's very, very easy to use for the physician to manage the patient. Hmm. In what way do you mean it's easy to use? Well, for example, let's say you had a kidney transplant and I had a kidney transplant. And what we have to do with these patients is we have to adjust the blood levels of each of these drugs individually for every patient. Mm -hmm. So if your blood level is low, too low, and I wanted to double the blood level, I, you would think that you just give double a dose. But the way these drugs typically work is it doesn't work quite that well. Mm -hmm. So if I double the dose for you, you might get three times the blood concentration. It's very hit and miss with a lot of these drugs. So. I think what our drug is going to be showing is that clinical utility and how these drugs are used clinically is going to be quite easy to use because there's a very good dosing relationship between dose and the concentration that we see in these patients. So, so it is simpler to very use Very simple, yeah. Many people and investors believe that drug development is a high-risk venture. Why do you believe that voclosporin has a lower development risk than other drugs? That's an excellent question. We know how this drug works because it's, it's actually modeled off two earlier drugs. The one that came out in 1982, the original, I guess you can call it the originator, mm -hmm. and then the, the newer drug that came out in 1994 and 1995 in various parts of the world. So we know how these drugs work. 
and this drug will work the same, in other words, at the same target in the patient's body, but in a way that we think is going to be more efficacious and more safe. Hmm. What are the key competitors to vonclosporin, both that are on the market currently and in development? Of course, if you ask me that, I would say we don't really have a competitor, but, <laughs> but um, there, are, there are actually two. Um, there's the original drug that came out of um, Basel, Switzerland in 1982 onto the marketplace, and then a Japanese drug that came out in 1994-95. Those are the two competitors. And so, in, if you can believe it, in this entire space uh, where these drugs work, there's only two of these drugs that we're competing against. And both of these drugs have lost patent protection, so we probably will see generic uh, infiltration into this space as well. Mm -hmm. But in terms of new uh, drugs that fit into the space, like Voclosporin, there's absolutely no new drugs in this space. So even if you go all the way back to preclinical or early discovery, all the way through clinical trials, nothing. Is that because this is such a hard problem to solve, to get the body to prevent the rejection while not creating other problems like diabetes and high blood pressure? Is this just a very difficult nut to crack? Yeah, you know, I think that's, I think that's part of it because for years, because of these safety issues with these drugs, people were saying that, why don't we try and find new classes of drugs that we can get around these safety issues? But what we're finding now is that over the past 10 or 15 years, there's been a lot of companies looking for new drugs that can get around these side effects. But by sort of winning on a side effect uh, part of the equation, what they're giving up is they're giving up on the rejection side. Hmm. So again, it's that balance between rejection and safety. And so if you increase safety and lose out on the rejection, you've lost out really in that patient. So we're trying to go back to the kind of the original concept mm -hmm. and, and see if we can fix something there. Very interesting. What's the revenue potential of Voclosporin and, and what does this mean financially to Isotechnica? Well, I'd mentioned that there's two other drugs in the marketplace. Right. Those two drugs uh, last year did about three billion US in, in revenue. And those are the old drugs? Those are the old drugs and both again off patent. So the, the, the market leader, which is the Japanese drug that came out in 1994, 95, did two billion in revenue. Hmm. And that drug causes diabetes and anywhere from probably 20 to 30 or 40 percent of the patients that have a kidney transplant will go on to develop new onset diabetes if they take that drug. So the market is huge, but at the same time, I think people have to just say, well, we have to live with the side effects or we have to you know, get around the, some of the side effects with a, a newer approach, and that's what we're trying to do. And Robert, looking toward the future, what do you see happening in the category of immunosuppressive drugs in general, and with your company in particular? That's, again, a really interesting question. What I've seen over the past 20 years or so is things are moving at a snail's pace. So the, the drugs that we're talking about now, even Voclosporin, which belongs to a certain class of drugs, this class of drugs was discovered about 25 years ago, and about 24 and a half years ago, they said, this class of drugs is really toxic, so why don't we try and get rid of them? But every time, every time they've tried to get rid of this class of drugs, they've realized that they, they lose out on the uh, protection of the re uh, against rejection episodes. So, for, uh, you know, there's actually a famous quote in, in this area saying, for 25 years we've had these drugs called calcineurin inhibitors, and for 25 years, we've been trying to get rid of them. Now, I think what we're trying to do is we're saying, no, we're not trying to get rid of these drugs. We've actually got a really good calcineur inhibitor. We just need to have to have a drug that manages the safety issues and at the same, same time has a really wide therapeutic window so we can manage these patients uh, in clinic. Very interesting. Robert, it is just fascinating to hear about the advances being made in the prevention of organ transplant rejection, particularly with regard to kidney transplants. Thank you so much for sharing the news about Boclosporin with us. Well, Jackie, thanks a lot for having me here. And thank you for watching for 21st Century Health. I'm Jackie Bales.